So, for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at the fruits of the Spirit. But the question is, what does that mean? Well, it's simple, really. In the same way that an apple tree produces apples, so Christians should produce these fruits in their lives. And of the Spirit indicates where these fruits come from. The strength and ability to do them is given to us by God. So if it's easier, don't think of them as fruits of the Spirit, but as the way to live as given by God. Each week we'll be taking you through one of these fruits and seeing how it affects us. Hi, for this week the theme is... I have with me two contestants. Their job is to give you their best definition of this fruit. Your job is to try and work out which one's right. Joy is summit more than happiness. Even when we're sad about summit, there can be joy as well. Might not be smiling on the outside, but we can be joyful. Like when someone dies, and we're sad that they're gone, but joyful that they had a good life. It's a decision we make to be joyful. It can stay with us longer than a smile. Joy is to be really happy. If you want to see pure joy, look at a dog being fed. People can be really happy too. Like when it's our birthday and we're getting lots of presents. Or maybe when we're getting married. Our wedding day is meant to be the happiest day of our lives. For kids, I guess it's going to the happiest place on earth. Disneyland. All of these things make us feel good and smile. That's what joy is. So, which one do you think is right? Does Disneyland bring joy or is it something more than that? Well, when we look at it from a biblical perspective, we see some interesting truths. You see, joy doesn't come from some fuzzy emotion inside. It comes from God. In the Bible, in the book of Acts, we see Paul in jail. How do you think you'd react if you were locked up, not for doing something wrong, but for doing something right? Oh, Paul was telling people about God, and some people didn't like it, and that's why he was put into jail. Now, the natural thing for Paul would be to feel sad or angry at that point in time, but that's not what happened. Throughout Paul's life, we see him being joyful in a variety of different situations. He wrote several of his letters, in fact, while he was in jail, and these letters were sent to encourage the Christians at the time, as well as us today. In fact, there was an occasion that we see Paul singing and worshipping, even while he was in chains. You see, Paul knew what it was like to be joyful. Not a fleeting emotion based on our situation in life, but an understanding of who God is and everything he has done for us. That even in the darkest of situations, we can rely on him and have hope in our future. And that is what brings us joy. Those that don't have hope in Jesus, through what Jesus has done for us on the cross, cannot be truly joyful. Sure, they can be happy when they go to Disneyland, but in the difficult situations that we find ourselves in, they cannot see past that to a brighter future. Because in all truth, if they haven't accepted Jesus as their saviour, then their future is not any brighter than their current situation. In contrast, those that have accepted Jesus as their saviour can have confidence in the hope that we have been promised an eternal life with God. When we are in those difficult situations, we can be assured that the future still remains. Jesus has already died on the cross for us. Our future is therefore secure. In Proverbs it says, The hope of the righteous brings joy, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The hope of the righteous. That is those that have been saved through Jesus. It is the hope that we have in him that brings joy. Knowing that when our time comes at the end of our life, we are not just leaving this earth, we are going home. Home, where our Father has been patiently waiting for us. He will welcome us home with open arms. An example of what this looks like in the Bible is a story that Jesus told. He tells of a father whose son has turned his back on him and gone away. Every day that father looks out to see whether his son is coming home. Many years pass and finally the son comes to his senses and comes home. And oh what joy he is met with. Even though he doesn't deserve it, he is welcomed home with open arms, a celebratory party is thrown in his honour and his father is more than happy. He is joyful. 
You see, we can experience a bit of this joy because we know what it will be like. We have hope. And that it is that hope that brings us true joy. Disneyland may be great for a moment or even a week. <laughs> but this joy is everlasting, no matter what situation we are in. However dark the path may seem, we know where that path is heading straight to our eternal home and to our God who loves us far more than we deserve. To give you an example of what this looks like in our lives, during the past year there have been many dark moments. It's been really tough. But our God is the same yesterday, today and forever, even in Covid. We may meet differently at the moment, but our joy is not in the present situations although we do see God's mercy in those as well, but it is in the unshakable fact that we will be going to be with him in heaven. And that is what brings us joy. The fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. You want to be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, space, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. You want to be a watermelon. You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, space, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, space, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit is not a lemon. If you want to be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit is not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit is not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. You want to be a grape. You might as well hear it, you can't be a fruit of the spirit Cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control.